I'm Dr. Benito Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So I've been asked to do this video quite a few times and it's basically feminine washes, so intimate hygiene. Um, in the recent years, there's been a spike in uh, everything from intimate washes to douching, to wipes, to intimate deodorants. Um, and so really this video is going to go through all the questions that you might be asking yourself on this particular topic, such as, is it necessary? Um, what are the mistakes that get made? What is the ideal routine for your intimate area? Um, and also my recommended products. So as you know, everything I recommend is evidence-based and is non-sponsored. This entire channel is non-sponsored. No video has ever been sponsored, will never be sponsored, so that you know which products to purchase and which ones maybe to sidestep. If you don't already know, I have published this book for you called Skin Revolution with HarperCollins. It's a skincare guide for skin of color. Often you don't have time to watch a full 20 minute video and sometimes you just want to flick to the chapter that you want to read about. So please do get your hands on a copy of this from Amazon, from Waterstones, from Barnes and Noble, um, because I did make it with love. So um, yeah, make sure you get yourself a copy of that and the link is down below. So with feminine hygiene products, there has been a huge push. So, you know, in one year, the US sold $300 million of feminine hygiene products, excluding sanitary towels and pads. Um, and so actually the motivation is there to sell this to you because obviously the big boys make money off of it. Um, but today we're gonna to be debunking some myths. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So let's start off with the vagina. So the vagina is self-cleaning. So it produces its own secretions, which removes dead skin cells and debris from inside. And this is why I would discourage you from doing anything that's gonna go inside into the vagina. So douching, wipes or steams, some people use soaps up there, um, would be a mistake for that particular area because it's already a self-cleaning device um, and you coming in with products that weren't designed for that environment is only going to lead to problems and I'm going to go through the problems in a second. So just a little bit anatomy um, of the vagina. The vagina starts is basically a muscular tube and at one end is the cervix that's the opening to the uterus that's where they do the smear tests and is extremely painful if you've ever done that <laughs> which you should have done by now um, and then the end is the vulva so the vulva is the opening to the outside world the microbiome and the ph of the um of the vagina to the vulva is different the vulva is the inner and outer labia it's where the clitoris is and the urethral opening and the next bit I'm going to say, I'm really hoping there are no men watching this, and this is purely for adult women. But basically, a quick way to remember it is foreplay happens in the vulva area and intercourse sex happens in the vagina area. So those are two separate areas. Now, the vulva um, has a different pH to the vagina. So the vulva is actually more acidic, which makes sense because it's open to the outside world. Um, so it has a pH of 3.5 to 4.7, whereas the vagina has a pH of 4.5 to 5. Now we naturally have lactobacilli, which are producing hydrogen peroxide, which leads to this acidic environment. And they um, basically protect the environment from other pathogens. And so if you wash that area or you reduce the pH and make it more alkali, you are now more susceptible to other infections, including yeast infections, which is very common. Yeast infections lead to itchiness, soreness, uncomfortable and discharge. So this is one of the main reasons that um, I would recommend you stay clear of trying to change the microbiome of your intimate area. Let's start off with things to avoid. So I would avoid douching or syringes. So douche is basically, it's like a syringe, it's like a bulb, a, a sack bulb, which you push and it has a little um, tube area in order to use pressure to get that fluid up into the vagina. Um, but the problem is, so I've heard people, for example, using diluted vinegar to do that because they think, oh, do you know what, it's an acidic environment, so I'm gonna use something that's a bit more acidic. But the problem is the mucosa 
does is not able to exfoliate so there's no dead skin cells on a mucosa to exfoliate it's a, it's, it's sensitive and it's vulnerable so you don't put acid um, onto mucosa same reason why you'd never peel for example the inner lip because this is all mucosa uh, there's a paper in the epidermal review which goes through some of the consequences of douching and they can include everything from pelvic inflammatory disease ectopic pregnancy so if you're pregnant it can push the fertilized egg back up into the, into the fallopian tube which can lead to an ectopic pregnancy and it makes you more vulnerable to stds or sti so sexually transmitted infection in a study to see what percentage of different populations were douching in the US um, in 1995 on a sample size of 10,847. The black population, 55% said they were douching, Hispanic, 33%, and then the white population only said 20%. So this is why I'm bringing it up to our global skin of color family, because I think it's a practice that's probably more common for us than for Caucasians. Also, the timing of douching in your menstrual cycle can make a difference. So for example, if you uh, do it during ovulation, then your estrogen levels are higher, your mucus is thinner, and the cervical oz is open. And so you're increasing your chances of ascending um, infection because of the pressure of douching. So a study on intimate washes showed 3.5 times increased risk of bacterial infection and doubles your chance of a UTI, urinary tract infection. And UTIs are extremely painful. It feels like when you are urinating, it feels like, you know, like razor blades um, down your urethra. So I don't want you to... Um, to ever experience that uh, so and it's also showed that wipes had a similar result and a study in 2013 showed vagisil feminine moisturizer reduce your lactobacilli which is what's producing the hydrogen peroxide which is creating that acidic environment which is keeping the pathogens out so the universal medical opinion um, near universal is to avoid douching completely and especially when you're pregnant so some good practices for you is number one, keep the uh, don't don't interfere with the vagina. It's a self-cleaning um, tube which you don't need to to get involved with. If discharge smells or the color changes, then go and see your doctor. I would also say cleaning the vulva is is inconclusive. Um, if you look at the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, they say wash with soap substitutes that include anti-inflammatories and humectants. I'm gonna go through my favorite ones with you now. Also make sure these products are nafe safe, meaning no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils. The last thing you want is to be irritating that delicate uh, area with fragrance and leading to contact dermatitis. So let's not do that. Um, and even then only wash once a day. You don't wanna overdo it. So these are the Dr. V approved products. So get your pen and paper. Let's start off with number one. Um, so it's Frank Body, which is a clean body wash. I don't like a lot of the other products in the range cause it does contain fragrance, but this one I love and I would recommend. The next one is Akin mild and gentle fragrance free body wash so the picture should be coming up on the screen for you the next one is cetaphil face and body wash the next one is baby dove head to toe wash the next one is a vanny cream gentle body wash now the shocking thing is when i went to have a look at um, products specifically for intimate female washes even the ones that said that are you know for sensitive skin so for example i looked at vagisil ph balance um the formula is not very good it contains fragrance it's just not a product that has been well thought out it's been well marketed and it sounds like the perfect product but the ingredients list is not good and so all of you know by now how to read the inky list. If you turn over the back of your package, if you've watched 10 of my videos by now, I've actually got a whole video dedicated to how to read the ingredients list, but if you've watched 10 of my videos, you will know how to turn the packaging and read the ingredients list and see, is this product pure marketing or is it actually gonna benefit me? Often, um, a lot of these products can even harm the skin, which is the exact opposite of what we want for skin of color because we burn and hyperpigment rapidly and we need to know what we're putting on our skin. We need to be educated and informed when it comes to our skincare. 
I'd love to hear your experiences with intimate washes. Uh, there's no judgment here. Please do just write your experiences just so that we can all learn from them. If you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, please do. It's our private Facebook group and it's for our Global Skin and Colour family. It's called Dr. V Sock Family. The link is down below too. Again, it's a safe space to talk about your skincare, you can upload photos of your skin and um, you'll find the whole family is amazing. Everybody really wants to help each other. It's an incredible space to be in. Um, but yeah, this uh, I haven't really come out of the skincare dome when it comes to this channel. I've pretty much stayed in it. But if there are other sorts of videos like I've done today that you would find helpful, can you write those down for me too? Just so that I've got some awareness of what you require that's maybe not on my radar, you know, things that I didn't know you would want to look at or learn about. Okay, so don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Dr. Mita Ratan and Skincare by Dr. V. I'm also on TikTok, which is Dr. Mita Ratan. And don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. I'm now releasing four videos a week on YouTube. So please do subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know um, when I'm in the comment section and you can come and jump in with us. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.